segment of uh, Big Bang Theory, I'll beat the S log. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of there is no specific end to the day, no specific beginning. Yeah, there's some times where I'm getting up and it's actually more when I'm getting up, cor when I'm getting up corresponds to the morning and when I'm going to bed huh, corresponds to uh, the night. But that's not always the case, and this is the case now. Let me give you a time and date stamp. It is uh, four, uh, four hours and 36 minutes into the day of uh, f Saturday, October 29th, 2016. Yeah, um. It's been a bizarre day. The Yesterday, even yesterday, was pretty bizarre. Uh, I expected to do a lot more in terms of vlogging or a lot more in terms of work, but I did get work done, um, but not in the manner that I expected it to get done. Uh, I got um, another episode of Tweetline Plus is now rendering, and uh, of now rendering the uh, 99th episode of Big uh, big, uh, big Bang Theory RL's BTS vlog. So, that's a pro. That's progress. It's, it's moving along. Uh, I did some organizing. Uh, stuff like that. It, it, I, it's part of. I, I do this as part of my milling around. I'm in mean, a sort of a state right now. I guess it has to do with fatigue. That is a very surrealistic state. Ugh. I feel like it's four o'clock in the morning all the time. It's not, you know, it's not, I, I don't feel awake. So, uh, I'm just doing bits of work here and there uh, without actually doing anything specific. So, there's nothing specific. So, okay, I've got this done. I've got that, you know. The specific things aren't getting done, but the bits and pieces in between are getting done. So, at least, you know, there there is progress moving ahead even when I'm in this sort of state where uh, not much is getting done from my perspective in terms of the way I feel things are. But this is vlogging. This is this is how vlogging actually for, for myself actually works. Now I have uh, was watching Shay and he said the uh, why I vlog he's got that sort of the, that title up there. And I'm pretty sure I'll I'll, I'll uh, in this episode I'll do the same thing. Uh, this is why I vlog. I mean, my, why I vlog is a variety of different reasons. Uh, one, I'm a scientist, and this is my journal. This is my scientific journal. Two, uh, you know, if someone wants to see behind the scenes here, what, what's going on, this, well, this is it. Uh, I am a real scientist. I am a real researcher. And this is... This is... Uh, the state I exist in. Uh, it's science is particularly if you're, if you're type of doing the type of exploration work that I'm doing. It's not really nine to five. Uh, it becomes part of who you are, and in many ways, it's it's as obsessive as uh, uh, vi as video games. Uh, I would actually I, I actually consider it to be the upper levels. Oh, the upper levels of nerd gaming. Nerd gaming is uh, any type of game, like a role-playing game, that where you have to uh, develop a character. You role-play a character, and you study the history of that character. There's a you know 
lot of times they're doing Dun Dungeons and Dragons. They're doing they're doing a lot of uh, middle e medieval or Middle Earth uh, sort of fantasy role plays with dra with dragons and uh, wi uh, wizards and things like you would see basically in the Hobbit, the Lord of the Rings, and uh, these types of uh, books. Um. Then of course they get into anime as well. There's there's the anime genre that, that a, lot, a lot of them get into. So, oh, well, there's two particular tracks for nerds: anime and uh, Dungeons and Dragons. The uh, sort of the uh, it's not really gothic. It's just <laughs> I don't know what they call goth. I mean, there there were tribes called barbarian tribes called the goth and the Visigoth, but uh, it's not specifically the term gothic itself. Uh, what a lot of people feel as gothic is actually just the 1800s. It's that, that period there. And at the same time as this is where you have the steampunk coming out of that. And in other words, these genres the, uh, and the gaming, the role play that you see cosplayers do, require a certain degree of study. They require a certain degree of understanding. And you sort of you do a sort of an uh, we call it a self apprentice, and in other words, you learn by yourself by making these mistakes on how to create the costumes, create the look, you know, create the feel, uh, create the character. And this is this is nerd gaming. Nerd gaming is extremely dynamic. And so when you go out and doing exploration of the universe, boy, well, I'm doing exploration of the universe. It's the exact same thing. It, this is something. It's a dynamic game. You don't know where uh, a lot of the answers are. A lot of the, you know, you, 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 in, in many cases, you don't even know what you're looking for in the beginning. Because if you're going out to the unknown, well, it is unknown. So, in many cases, you don't really know what the, what the question is to even to begin to, to sort of look for the answer. It's sort of, an, it's, it, what I call it, it's sort of like a general survey is that you go out, you take a look around, you take some notes, you look at some objects, you, you take pictures of objects that you're looking at, then you go back and you start, you, and you see what you have. If you have enough information, you start doing a bit of a sorting, you do some sorting. Then you go back out again, bring some more information back, sort it with the stuff you had before, or sort it separately, take a look at the two different sorts, compare the different sorting, the, the Material, the, the materials from the first time to the second time. Then you go out again and do the same thing. And in other words, it's the information that you bring back and the totality of the information you've gained from your experiences that derives the direction forward. So there's no way to predict. And this is what I say. It, it, it matches very well with the quantum, quantum, quantum mechanics uh, uh, random walk and the whole concept of quantum mechanics. Qu the whole concept of quantum mechanics where... Uh, things are more or less random. And the thing is, so you take this particular point of view and ask yourself, well, <clears throat> how far can I go? Where is the end of knowledge? And that's where I say it myself. I've actually experienced uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Excuse me. In that... I've begun to understand that knowledge itself is fundamentally asymptotic. This means it cannot be reached, it only can be approached. And this is where it comes in, it comes into the whole question of calculus, which is the fundamentals of limits. Uh, a limit tells you how close you can get to an asymptotic point. Uh, it's in, in the limit, it's, it, it, you don't actually reach it, but you, you get to a point where you say you're close enough to say that you have reached it. Now, but the thing is, is that well, this is the case in calculus. You can actually do the calculations on limits. And within that, you have uh, the uh, base of limits become the base, becomes a foundation for derivatives, integrals, and all the other functions that you find in calculus are all based on the concept of a limit. So... You're getting into the fundamentals of a limit when you're talking about uh, asymptotic curves or asymptotic points and approaching them. And this is the same thing when you're talking about knowledge or you're getting into the fundamentals of calculus because you're talking about the 
limit of knowledge, how far you can get before you reach, the, you know, to say you've uh, of more or less arrived, or what type of approximation do you get from uh, from a model? And the thing is, I find, I can say to myself that well, yeah, you could technically do that. You can actually say, okay, I've got an understanding. I can tell you what it is, but. The, the reality of this is sort of, I go back and I sort of explain the whole situation of dark matter and dark energy. The danger is to take the assumption of what we know and say, yes, this is within the limit. Is to understand what happened with the creation of dark matter, matter and dark energy and our understanding of the universe and what actually happened in physics. And the thing is, is that we try to take the assumption that we know what we know. We sat down and some, you know, the scientists sat, decided to work on this. Sat down and started working on the equations of the universe. They tried to say, okay, yeah, we can sort of put together a model right now. Our mathematics and our computers are good enough. So sat down and started working on a model. The problem was that as they began working on this model... The model of what they knew didn't work that well. So they start adding in matter and energy. And you have to do it, you have to, you have to, if you add in matter, you add, add in mass, you have to add in energy as well, you have to balance out the equations. So this is why you have dark matter and dark energy. And it has to do with the relationship between E equals mp squared and the fact that you have a wave and a particle at the exact same time. This is the wave particle duality. This is the whole issue of simultaneity. Uh, within quantum mechanics. And as they began doing this and adding in this sort of called dark matter, and the whole quest for the black hole and the observation of the black hole is sort of, you say, yeah, you can do this because with the finding of a black hole, what they found was they had an object that was bright, but when they looked at the center of it, they couldn't see a star there. There was nothing there. So there was this nothingness that was in that was affecting the entire surrounding space. So this is the this is sort of the understanding of a black hole. You have nothingness in the center. You see it. You observe not the black hole itself directly, but you you observe the effect this black hole has on the surrounding space. In other words, a nothingness affects the somethingness around it. So. This is sort of the same thing, the same concept that sort of emerged with the uh, dark matter and dark energy. And the thing is, is by the time they sat down and actually sort of figured out and got these equations working to some degree, where they, where they, where, where they were, where they considered themselves to be satisfied with the results, it wound up that uh, ninety-five percent of the universe <laughs> was made out of dark matter and dark energy. Which it meant, if you sit down and understand the equation, it meant that the known part of our universe was now 5% and the unknown 95%. So the certainty, the, the, when they were absolutely certain, yeah, this is, we have the absolute knowledge of the universe. We, we've, we've got to that point where we know enough to put into equations the, fu the, the functions of the universe. They realized, as they take this assumption, when they got to the end of the assumption, and got to the final equation, their, 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 their certainty, their limit, was within 5%. And this is definitely asymptotic. They thought that they were at the end. They thought that they were close enough. Where the reality is, they are nearly 5% along the road. Their journey, as far as we've come, you know, modern man, as far as we've come in our understanding of science and the limits of the universe, has been 5%. And so this is, this is the journey. This is what I do. My job is to go beyond that 5% to see what else is there. 
right? It's not to sit back and say, oh, yeah, I'm a genius, I'm a this, I'm a that. That's not my job. I'm not there to be a quiz show uh, host and, and know all the answers to a, to a trivia question about, about this or that. Did you know? That's, that's not my job. My job is to be within the unknown on an almost continuous basis. Tashing back with what I know, to sort of develop some relationship between the unknown and the known. That's what I do. And it's not 24 hour, it's not the 9 to 5 job. It's not you go to work you know, in the morning, and, you know, get up, go to work in the morning, and then come back at the evening and, and turn off. That's not the case at all. It's with you continuously. And this is what I'm talking about being in middle school for life. It is this continuous, sort of this continuous situation where your understanding of what you're doing never actually goes beyond what you have in, in basically middle school. I'm like a tween for life. I mean, I, I would say grade is the, is the upper limit, but typically you're within five, six, and seven. And that's why I say middle school is that's your your, your typical range there. Uh, Five, you're starting to get into that middle school fate to phase. Uh, seven, you're kind of moving out of it into, you know, grade eight, you start move, you start moving on to more serious stuff. And this is where your focus starts to, you know, for the standard education starts to sort of, uh, sort of come together. You start doing some uh, more significant things. Because, they, oh, yeah, your, your understanding of what you have, your understanding is significantly better. And so... Therefore, you can handle more. But the thing is, is with exploration, that never happens. You never, you, you somewhat get into grade eight, and usually, as you do that, as you, as you get some degree of confidence in what you have, uh, the next step you take forward knocks all that certainty away, and you're back at the beginning again, starting from grade four, grade five, building back up again. Uh, trying to understand what happened, what changed. Uh, and I think it's so this is the this is the vlog. This is the 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 the, the log of this particular journey. And this is what exploration science is and this is why I vlog. And as was J Shea talks about the, you know wanting to know about the esoterics. Well I mean what happens afterwards, you know, do do we go just into the dirt and that's it? And, 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 or is there something more beyond? Well, how can anyone who can't stand up there and say there is no God based on science have any degree of confidence if if what we know, right, our understanding of the universe is within 5%? How do you have any degree of certainty on 5%? And my answer, my answer is that you don't. So you don't have that certainty. You don't have that f final question, oh yeah, we're just going to end up in the dirt and that's it. There is obviously something more, particularly if you look at the history of the world. There's some, we see that there is something more. What that something more is, is depends on how far you, you want to take your questions and what you want to consider it. Most people... Simply follow what follow what they're told. They don't question the the more beyond their their immediate, and this is what most people don't question beyond their immediate. Most people always most people the average person focuses on the immediate, their immediate surroundings. What am I going to eat today? What am I going to wear today? Uh, what should I do for shopping or or whatever that it is? You know, this is our focus. There are very few who take it outside that standard view to a more esoteric view, if you will. And it's not necessarily esoteric because if there is more, something more spiritually and uh, the uh, super string theory, the uh, M theory of the, of, of the universe, what's called the manifold theory, which talks about parallel universes, well, a spiritual universe is a parallel universe. Heaven is a spirit is, is a per, could be classified as a parallel universe. So now we're talking. We br we bring back in the question again: Is there something more? Because now 
a super string theory sort of opens the door for this. So you can't simply dismiss it and say, oh, this is not a scientific question. Because it is. Physics is bumped into this limit. And if you simply ignore it, then you're not an open explorer. You're not exploring with an open mind. And if that's the case, then, I don't know, do you like living a lie? Do you like lying to yourself, having your life being, being meaning nothing? Well, there's some people, that because that's some people, some people, that's the way it is, right? Life, right? If, you, if your philosophy, you follow Western philosophy, your post, in most people, in the most laws and everything like now, are in this state, they're in this sort of postmodern surrealist existence, surrealistic existence. And that means that everything's an illusion, everything's a concept, and that's why people say, well, you know, talk about this whole thing about homosexuality. Homosexuality is not an issue if everything's a concept. Neither is transgender. So if everything's a concept, a concept and an illusion, there's no reality, then these things are fine. If there is a reality, and you sit down and you study and do the research, biology, whatever, so so forth, then issues do pop up that need to be answered. And it really d depends on your perspective, how you sort of view these things determines whether or not you are going to ask or answer with something more specific as as uh, as that there is an issue here, or is everything simply conceptual and no issue because everything is conceptual? Right? It's post post postmodernism. Anyways, uh, okay, so this is it. This is why I vlog. This is my uh, spiel on that. Uh, uh, just about uh, five o'clock in the morning. So, anyways. Uh, I'll see when this end, when this end, when this end up coming out. It'll probably be a uh, hundred and first episode. So, anyways, uh, see you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory. I'll be the of uh, probably in a couple hours. Democratic Earth. Earth.